Hello boys and girls, thank you for joining us in this lesson. So today we are going to learn whether you should be focusing on Rust in 2021 to propel your career further. But before we delve into that, let's explore what Rust is. Well, Rust as a programming language is designed from the ground up for performance and safety, uh, especially when it comes to concurrency. If you're coming from C and C++, you will be familiar with the syntax because it's extremely similar to those two languages. But the only difference is Rust can guarantee that memory safety before you even release the binary. So if you're familiar with the segmentation faults that you usually encounter in C and C++ uh, program, well, Rust has done a lot of work to prevent this type of errors. Rust achieves this through a system of ownership on borrowing that is enforced by a borrow checker at compile time. The other thing also to notice, compared to Java for example, Rust is super fast and it's probably as fast as C or C++. It does not have a garbage collector, which means that by the time you compile your binary, it is correct at the time of successful compilation. Memory safety is already incorporated and there is no garbage collector to interrupt the flow of your code while you're working. Basically, to summarize it, there are usually three words that define Rust. It's the concurrency, it's the memory safety, and it's extremely fast. And you will see this uh, regurgitated quite a lot within the Rust community. Now, I'd love to show you some examples of how Rust compares to other languages. So as you can see here, this is a plain C snippet, and this is a Rust snippet. We are familiar with the curly braces. We are familiar with the semicolons. It's pretty much the same. Now what I'd like to show you here is maybe a sample of how the Rust compiler goes beyond memory safety and actually tries and predicts errors before they happen. The Rust compiler is well conceived. Uh, it has a lot of features. Uh, the errors that you get are very color coded. They are extremely detailed. Most of the time it will provide you with additional uh, hints uh, and most of the time it actually provides you with the answer on how to fix that specific error. Of course, uh, if um, it cannot provide that, there is always the explain command that you can use there. You can run on the uh, terminal itself that will elaborate on the error code that you just received. Basically, the Rust compiler is your friend. It might take a bit of time, of course, to compile binaries, but it is worth it in the end. It does a lot of heavy lifting for you. At compile time, uh, it uses Rust ownership uh, system to analyze uh, your program for any memory safety issues. It also uh, checks for any concurrency problems uh, that you might encounter, uh, and it tries and catch them before they happen. The other thing to note here is that Rust comes with uh, a fantastic package manager, which is Cargo, out of the box. You do not have to install yet a third-party utility to manage this for you. Now, Cargo is a very powerful tool. It allows you to download dependencies, uh, build your binary, release it into production, and all those activities that are usually very cumbersome in other languages because you have to orchestrate between multiple utilities. And now the final thing that I want to touch upon here, the, the biggest differentiator as well for Rust is the fact that it has zero cost abstraction, which basically means there's virtually no runtime overhead for the abstraction that you use. Uh, in simpler words, is if you have three or four different ways of abstracting the code that you're typing, uh, the end result would still be the same whichever way you've used it. So should you be learning Rust? My answer is an emphatic yes, and I'll tell you the reasons why. Now, the top companies in the world are actively hiring Rust developers. They are actively reaching out to the Rust community and picking out those who are actively involved in developing software using Rust, but also have a good track record of building software in Rust. One of these companies is, of course, Microsoft, which uses Rust because of the safety aspects. For example, C++ memory corruption bugs cause about 70% of all the vulnerabilities that you see out there. This, of course, prompted Microsoft to take a proactive approach and started to look at Rust as an alternative system programming language. Now, 
I, I do want to pause here for a minute and maybe explore by what we mean by memory safety issues. This is basically when you try and use an uninitialized variable in C++ or you try and use a memory location that was freed only to be used again later in the program. Well, believe it or not, C and C++ by themselves, they do allow you to do these things. So you have to uh, make sure that uh, you put some safeguards in there, right? And some abstraction layers to avoid this. Now, these uninitialized variables and using memory locations that were freed will cause a buffer overflow that can easily be exploited by CVEs. Now, if you're not familiar with what a CVE is, it basically stands for Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures. Basically, it's just a known security thread that's been catalogued and documented properly. The other company that I want to talk about is Amazon. Amazon also uses Rust. A couple of good examples here is the Amazon Firecracker, which is the open source virtualization technology that powers AWS Lambda and Fargate, and a few other things as well within the AWS ecosystem. AWS also launched Bottle Rocket, a Linux-based container operating system written entirely in Rust. It is a lightweight OS that only runs the bare minimum to get your container started. Amazon Love for Rust has been uh, noted and they wrote a blog post about it, just like Microsoft did. Now, of course, many other companies do use Rust. Uh, Facebook is one of them, uh, Google is one of them, and of course Firefox is also one of these companies. Now, if you don't believe me, you can just check the stats, right? Uh, if you look at Stack Overflow, for example, for the past five years, Rust has been ranked the most loved language five years in a row. Uh, other things to look at is just go to any job board, so go to the native Microsoft one or the Amazon one and just type in Rust and you'll see the number of jobs that come up with uh, the Rust language. Now, if you know Node or Python, it is fine. Pick up Rust, right? It is a system programming language that has its place in your toolkit. Uh, maybe you could be using Node and Python to build something quick and, uh, you know, something that is, uh, I wouldn't say superficial, but at least is a front end app or something along these lines. Now, if you have something more sophisticated and more advanced, maybe if you're writing drivers or some uh, kernel utilities, then definitely have a look at Rust. It does not hurt to have this on your CV. Okay, let me close this session here by saying uh, just a small word of caution uh, regarding Rust. It does involve a steep learning curve. So make sure that you do invest in videos, books, uh, online materials. Uh, I mean, I do have some here in my channel, so feel free to browse those. Uh, so is, I think that is the number one concern uh, for anyone that's picking up Rust today. Dedicate time, make sure you concentrate throughout those sessions that you're learning Rust. It is extremely important that you have the fundamentals uh, locked down. Okay, thanks again. I hope that was useful and we'll see you on the next lesson.